Welcome everybody. I'm Jen and this is Zoe and we're going to be making the um, wrapped rocks for you today. So the, if you bought the kit, this is the second day of the first week and this is the pony bead wrapped rock and it's going to, I mean, this is mine, but it's going to look like this. You're going to need your yarn, your beads and your rock for this one. So fairly simple, um, but we're going to show you some variety too. So if you want to mix it up, We'll talk about that during the class. And like Jimena said, like if you have any questions at all, just feel free to drop those in the Q&A so that she can ask them to me and Zoe and we'll be happy to answer them for you. So um, we're gonna look at the supplies real quick and I'm gonna tell you what's involved. And once we go through everything we need um, and you guys have a chance to gather them all up, then we'll start our craft. All right, so like I said, uh, yarn wrapped rock and so you're gonna need a rock. This Now, my rocks are kind of round, kind of smooth. I will say that's just because this is all I had, but you are not limited to this kind of rock at all. So if you wanna use like a giant rock or um, if you wanna use a, you know, a super angular rock or a special rock, then you can totally do that. And if you wanna use something you've already painted, that's okay too. So if you have painted rocks laying around, you can totally take your painted rocks and, and do some bead wraps around your painted rocks. So grab what you have and we'll, we'll make that work. All right, so other than the rocks, we're gonna need the yarn. So I've gotten a few colors here. Whichever color you want is, is great. If you, you know, for, again, for those of you who ordered the camp kit, um, I think there's a whole bunch of yarn in there. So pick the ones that are your favorite and we'll use those today. Um, and then just an assortment of, of beads. So pony beads, uh, there's special beads I've gotten here. Um, we've got some really big uh, jewels here. And then I also found some little foam pieces. So if you guys have any of the foam, I know, man, my craft place has tons of foam and different shapes and stuff. Anything that you can run um, the yarn through, see there's the little hole in the middle, you can put on this string and run around your rock. And then you're gonna want some scissors because you're gonna need to cut the yarn. Make sure they're your, they're kid safe creatology scissors. And then I've grabbed a little thing of scotch tape because I'm gonna show you guys a quick trick. Now, if you don't have scotch tape, that's okay. You can use painter's tape, masking tape, any kind of tape um, that you have. If you wanna get real crazy, you can take a sticker, like a sticker that you would stick on your clothes and you can wrap the sticker around the same way that I'm gonna show you how to wrap the tape. So I'm gonna show you a really, really cool trick. All right, a minute before I get going. Are there any questions? Yes, we do. We have questions about substitutions uh, as far as the rock goes. Um, someone's asking about, we have wood, shells, um, crystal rocks. Would any of that work? What else could we use? I'm sorry, You, um, if they don't have rocks, what can be used? Yeah, yes. Oh. People are asking about um, using wood instead, shells, yes. um, crystal so rocks. Yeah, that's a great that's a great one. I'm glad you I'm glad you said that because that's the very first thing I thought of is, you know, you can go out and find your, you know, whatever you have available in nature. So if you don't have any rocks, like you want to take a really cool piece of wood that you found, um, that's okay. You know what? If you've been to the beach because it's summer and you have like a seashell or um, a starfish or something cool that you've collected off of the beach, that'll work. There, you know, use your imagination here. Any of those things that you've collected, that that's why I love this. So things that maybe you wouldn't paint on, like you do painted rocks, you can totally yarn wrap um, things like that. So yes, I love that. Great question. Someone even says that they made they use dried clay to make rocks. Oh yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. That would work. And um, how many rocks do you think we'll be using today? Oh, you can use as many as you want. So I'm gonna. I mean, I've got five right here, but if, if um, you know, if I need to redo them, I can. Um, we're just gonna do a few of them to show you the different ways you can do it. Um, perfect. Um, and also uh, we can use any amount of colors for the, the yarn, um, right? Yep, that's right. So 
um, you can use you can use one, which is what I've done here. Or if you want to mix them up, you can do a couple of strands with different beads on them, and you can wrap them at the same time. Yeah, I'm. We will go through all of that. Perfect. Um, someone is also asking if we need tape. I see it on the table, so I'm going to go with yes. Am I correct? Yeah. So, yeah. Tape. Tape is. Tape is. Um, I'm going to show you a trick because what happens. Let me just go ahead and and kind of get started here. So what happens is when you're dealing with yarn. Let me see if I can get that to go and focus. Um, there we go. When you're dealing with yarn, um, it can start to kind of unravel in the end when when you're trying to put it through things. So you know you'll twist it and keep twisting it and and keep putting it through the bead and it'll go for a while. But especially if you have like a really long bead, like some of these right here, like so I have some rainbows and the rainbows. Look how wide those are. So you've got to get the yarn all the way through the rainbow. And it can be really tricky when your yarn just kind of wants to compress on you. So my trick is that I take a little piece of tape. And again, it does not have to be, it doesn't have to be scotch tape. It doesn't have to be, you know, clear tape. It can be any kind of tape, like painter's tape. Like I said, you can do this with a sticker. Like if you're really pressed and you can't find any tape, you can take just a regular sticker out of your sticker book and you can you can just twist it around the yarn. So see what I'm doing here? I'm just encasing the little end of yarn in my tape and I'm rolling it up as tight as I can and making, so essentially what you're doing is you're, you're making the end of your yarn kind of pointy because that point is gonna then feed through your beads. So, you know, you're put, make sure you're making it tight because if you don't make it tight, then it's actually going to make your yarn thicker than it needs to be. So when you're done, you know, you've got this nice little neat point where your yarn is. So you can just very easily feed the bead onto it. And more importantly, when you get to this kind of stuff where it's really long, you can go all the way through like that. See how easy that is? Okay, Zoe, do you, would you like me to hand this over to you? Okay, I'm gonna give you the purple one. So here, here's your little piece. Now, which bead would you like to put on your rock? You want, uni I've got unicorns, I have rainbows, I have jewels like this. Okay, you want hearts? Okay, and then, oh, something else I forgot to mention. So I, I talked about beads and I talked about foam and talked about jewels, but something else you can use um, are buttons. So you can either buy buttons or if you're like me, you have buttons laying around the house. Um, well, maybe not laying around the house, but I have a little jar of buttons uh, that I've collected because you never know when you might need a button. So this is another fun thing that you can um, that you can put on your your rock. So about the beads, um, is there any like particular type of bead that you would recommend? The pony beads, I mean, I would just say use the pony beads that we sell or that came in your kit. Um, and the, the reason why they work the best is because they have the larger hole and you're going to be able to feed that yarn through a little bit better than if you're trying to use like a seed bead or something that's really, really small. So this is this is the, the best one here or these kinds are like the cool buttons like that. Yeah. Perfect. Well, how do you put the big ones on when when the string is that tiny? When you put the, you put it right through the middle like this, just like you would the other ones. Or if you wanted to, you could go through a couple of times like this and kind of make a loop, but it's up to you. And then once you have all the beads on it that you want, then I'm gonna let you pick your rock and we can put it on your rock, okay? Okay. All right, I think I'm gonna do yellow. So I'm gonna do this again so that you guys can see because I'm sure there's a few of the, you that are already, already inquiring about how I did the tape again. So, <laughs> I know this too well. All right, so you're, you're gonna take the end of your yarn. So just the end piece, 
and you're gonna take a piece of tape about an inch long. And again, this doesn't have to be scotch tape. It doesn't have to be clear tape. It can be painter's tape. And then you're just gonna put the tape on the edge of the yarn and you're gonna roll the yarn up in the tape really tight. And you want the tape to stick past the yarn just a little bit. So like my yarn, my yarn stops just shy of where the, the tape ends. So this tape sticking out over the edge, that way you get a nice clean point of tape to go through that bead and you don't have yarn that's gonna try to ball up on you when you push it through the bead hole. And then you're just gonna wrap the tape around tightly. Don't try to rush this part. You're just gonna go slow, slowly wrap the tape around like a burrito, around and around, round and around until it's all gone. And then you'll have a nice point on the end of your yarn. And then that, that. Oh, is it tricky for that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have someone in the chat suggesting um, if you don't have tape to maybe um, use it with, uh, get the end of the yarn wet and that should help it through the, the bead. Yep, you can get it wet. That will help. All right. So we have a, I'm sorry, Jen. We have another question. How long yep. should the, the yarn be? Um, I mean, again, that depends on what you're wrapping it around. So we talked about, you know, putting this around rocks, but we also talked about going around bigger things or bigger rocks. Um, I think the best thing you can do is just kind of take some yarn and wrap it around your, your item a few times. And when you look at it, you think, okay, that's, you know, that's as many times as I think I want to go around it. And remember, it doesn't have to cover the rock. You're not, you're not necessarily hiding your object under the yarn. You're just going around it a few times so that the beads, um, you know, can decorate it. So once you've gone around a few times and you feel pretty happy about it, um, cut the yarn at that point, and then you can unwrap it and put your beads on it. So that way it gives you, like, you can gauge it a little bit better. Perfect. And what about substitutions for yarn? Any recommendations? Sure, you can use twine or um, string that you have already um, to wrap it around. Oh, I think Zoe's almost ready. Okay. I'm all done. Okay, you're all done. Can you pick out which rock you would like to put this around? You want that one, okay. Put it right here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to space out the beads a little bit. I just need one more. Oh, one more, okay. All right. Okay, see once we once we start going around the rock, you, you'll have to, you know, you're gonna, you're not be able to put any more on there. Okay, so the, so there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can start by just like holding the short end of the string around and then just start wrapping and wrapping the rock. The way I like to start is I like to kind of set it up first and say, this looks good. You know, I'm gonna put this kind of in the center. I want this to be the center of my rock. So you can do that. And you're just gonna kind of pull the yarn tight around the rock, behind the rock. Now on the back side of the rock, you don't want any beads. So your rock's gonna, your, your rock's gonna sit on this side. You're decorating the top side. So then, oops, too many twists of the rock here. Let me put that back. Um, all right, so you want the back to be free of beads and you're just going to wrap the yarn around and every time you come around or so, you can, you can skip a few if you want, you're gonna want beads on the front part, okay? So I wrapped it and then I'm gonna put some more beads here. And then I'm gonna wrap it again. And then I'm gonna put the next group of beads here. And Jen, we can use as many beads as we'd like, right? Oh yes, as many or as few as you would like. Um, this is, this is <laughs> far from a science. Um, this is just whatever looks good to you and looks awesome on your surface that you're choosing, be it a rock or a stick or clay, whatever you've, whatever you've decided to use. All right, and then the last of the beads here, 
I'll put right there. Can I cut out the string? Yep, I'm gonna let you cut it. All right, so when you get the beads on the rock where you want them, and, and they don't have to be perfectly placed, just because you can, um, you can go back and move them around a little bit. But when you get them kind of in the groupings that you want, you're going to tie the yarn onto the back of the rock. So you're gonna make your knot back here and you're gonna want it to be fairly tight. So if you need, you know, your grown up to help you hold the knot, that's totally fine. Or maybe they can just tie the knot all together. Um, but you want it to be tight enough that the, that the beads don't, or the yarn doesn't slide off the rock. Okay, Zoe, can you cut this? Yeah. Here, cut this about, about this far away from, don't cut it too close to the knot, okay? Yeah. Yep, that's perfect. Good job. All right, so we have the tie on the back and we have the beads on the front. And now, now that I have it tied off and I don't have to worry about it moving on me too much, now I'm gonna kind of reorganize my, my jewels here so that they are laid out nicely. So like I said, you can just adjust them, space them out a little bit. So now look at that. There's a nice jeweled rock and I've got um, a unicorn, I've got a uh, rainbow, I've got stars, jewels, hearts. Um, what do you I think? Have a you have a question, okay. Why do we have to cut off the string? Because if you don't cut off the string, then the string is going to lay under the rock like this and it's going to poke out from behind the rock. So we cut the string so you can't see the string. Okay. Like why, that. Then why and if you want, you guys can wrap that string on around and around and around the rock. There Again, there are no rules here as, as far as like it has to be wrapped like this or, you know, it has to be like that. This is this is however you think it looks good. All right, now I'm gonna put mine together real quick. What kind of questions do we have while I'm doing this one? So we have a question about bells. Could we use um, like jingle bells instead of beads? Oh yeah, absolutely. That is um, bells. I almost grabbed some bells actually, but I was like, man, I already have a pretty, pretty big assortment here. So I thought I would restrict myself today. Perfect. Um, another uh, popular question is, can we or do we have to paint the rocks before we restart adding the, the yarn with uh, the beads? You do not have to paint the rock, but you can paint the rock. And if you do paint the rock, I would paint it before the, the jewels go on and then let it dry thoroughly before you try to put um, the string on. So if you're doing this, like if you're painting it right now, you're probably going to need to wait like an hour or so for the paint to dry um, <clears throat> before you try to put the beads on. Perfect. Um, trying to see what other questions we have. Um, someone is asking if you could go over um, the wrapping and the tying of the, of the yarn again um, for Harper. Uh, the cat decided to play with the string or the yarn, so. Oh, you you want to go through wrapping it around the rock or the wrapping it and then tying it at the end or like how do you yep. finish it off? Yep, absolutely. I'm just gonna make a. I'm just gonna add a quick, got a quick little um, couple of things here that I'm gonna put on my string. Okay. Now this one. I think I'm going to use this longish rock. All right. So again, no science here. I'm going to start with, um, let's see. I'm going to start with this group down here. I'm just going to go around like a couple of times and then put another group up here. And, um, you know, if you wrap your rock or whatever your item is and you get to the point where you're like, man, that's an awful lot of stuff, you can always take these off before you tie it. So don't worry about, you know, if you put too many on or if you don't have enough on, like let, if, let's say you wrap it and you're like, man, I wish I'd put a couple more on there, put a couple more on there. That's not a problem at all. Okay, this one. And so how would you get the, the yarn not to fall off? So 
again, you're just, you're, you're making it tight around the rock. So if you make it too loose, it's gonna slide off. You can tape it on the backside or glue it on the backside with like a, you know, a, a glue, but the, really you don't, you don't need to because if you're, if you're tying it tight enough, then it's not gonna slide. The, the more, honestly, I'm using the most difficult kind of rock here because it's a smooth sided um, rock that has a smaller end than it does a middle. So for those who are using like an angular rock or, you know, a rock that has different dimensions to it, it's probably going to be a lot easier for you guys to keep the stuff on the rock because, um, you know, you've, you've got a little bit more grip on there. But like I said, you can always tape it or whatever um, on the back side if you feel like it's not staying the way you want it to. All right, so again, the back side of my rock is free of beads. See, no beads. All of them are on the front side. And I'm going to tie the knot. And this is where you have to make sure that it's nice and tight. And this is where having a, a helper to hold the middle of your knot is, is very good because that makes sure you get a nice tight knot on the back. And then when you get done, cut it off so that it's just short. And then you can arrange your beads to your liking on the front of the rock. Like this. Do you want to do another one, Zoe? Um, do you? Okay, so here's another thing I didn't think about until just now. You could even get super fancy and do something like a braid. What? Now you're going to have to be what? careful uh, about how you would put the beads on. So you can do a couple of things. You can you can tie your strings together and then put your beads on, the, or I'm sorry, put your beads on the strings and then tie tie your end together and then braid the, the beads into the braid or you can braid the braid and then thread them over the beads. You're just gonna have to make sure they're not beads that have, so like the buttons have smaller holes than some of the beads do. Um, so the bigger the hole, the easier it will work with a braid. But if you're doing a braid, Yeah, if you're doing a braid, Can I do a braid? you want to do a braid? Sure, I'll show you how to do a braid. I don't know how to make braids. So if you're making a braid, you're going to have your three strings and you always take one of your outside strings and you cross it over the middle string. So okay. I'm going to, I'm going to do it a few times. So see the red one? I'm going to go between the next two. So I'm gonna go over here between these two. So then it makes the three again. Yeah. So then I take the opposite outside one and I go between the two so that it's making the three again. And you just alternate outside in, outside in, outside in, outside in. And I'm doing it really loose. Do so you wanna do it tighter than that? Can All right, you wanna do it? Yeah. Okay, let me, I'm gonna unravel it. And if you guys aren't, you know, if you guys don't want to do braids, that's cool. I just thought, you know, that's another really neat way to decorate the rocks is to do a braid. All right. And you got to keep the braid tight. Okay. That's good. Here, do the next one. This one. There you go. No, in the middle. Okay. Then do this one in the middle and do this one in the middle. There you go. Look at that. Zoe's making her very first braid. Good job. This one in the middle. Good job. Very nice. So why don't you guys tell Jimena and I in the, and Zoe and I in the Q&A, what are some other ways that you guys have decided to decorate your rocks today? So Nikisha is doing a pattern. Okay. I'm waiting on more answers. Okay, so we have pink and white, 
pony, lots of pony beef. Um, Multicolored yarn yep. with bells, animal foam stickers, letter beads, color changing. Oh, yeah. Beads. Um, what else? Embroidery floss. Oh, that's a good one that, that people have around the house. If you don't have yarn, that's a good, that's a good substitute. Yes, we have washi tape as well. Mm -hmm. Star pattern, unicorn beads. Oh boy, we have lots of answers. That is awesome. You guys are creative, I love it. Okay, I'm almost done with this braid and then I'm gonna show you how to put this around your rock. And it's I think- It's really hard to do a braid. It does. I thought you did a great job doing your braid. Okay. Yeah, so when you get to the braids. end of the braid, before you tie the end, don't don't tie the end. So when you get to the end, you're going to have, you know, your three pieces left. So now we want to do what we did earlier with the tape, but we're going to do it with these three pieces. So down here past the braid, you're just going to put your tape on and make it really tight. Swirl it up as tight as you can around the end of that braid because that's gonna be your point that goes through. So this, the tighter it is, the better it's gonna go through. And then I'm just gonna cut the yarn at the end of the tape. So see, there's my point again, but it's instead of, instead of being on one piece of yarn, it's on a nice braid. So this time I think I'm gonna use foam because it has a nice large center. So I'm just gonna put it through the foam pieces. We're just gonna do a few pieces. Why don't you do like a pink circle? You want me to do a pink circle? I have one pink circle. Oh, that's not that. Let's see, maybe let's do a yellow heart and then maybe an orange star. Yeah, orange okay. star. Right. Uh, what about a red, a red, um, a red heart? A red heart? Okay. All right, I think that's enough. Okay. We want to make sure it fits around our rock. Okay, so now you have this cool braided yarn and you have some shapes and you can just do the braid. If you just want to show off the braid, you can just wrap the rock, um, you know, you could just put that braid around the rock like that and you could just have a really cool looking yarn design or you can use your shapes. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna take a couple of these shapes off actually and just do a few. Um, like this. And I'm just going to go around. Okay. I'm going to go around like this a couple of times. So you can see the braid and you can see the foam pieces. All right. I think I'm just going to do the braid. I feel like you can't see the nice pretty braid. All right. Any, any more um, designs coming through? Um, we have some people doing this on toilet paper rolls, other people doing it on popsicle sticks. Um, oh, I like that idea. Yeah. The popsicle sticks, toilet paper roll. Look at that. See, people are getting inventive with their around the house items. Yeah, someone drew their, their face on, on a rock. Wow. Artist. Yeah. Okay. So here's one where I've just, it's like a friendship bracelet rock with the braid. That's so cool. All right, what other questions? So I've gone through several. So a traditional kind and we talked about the painted kind and now we've done the braided kind. So what, if anything, would you guys have questions about? Um. So just before I, I do that, um, Liv says that um, she used a stuffed animal 
decorator. Who's oh, there. yeah, that's cool. Uh, so we have a question about googly eyes. How do you get googly eyes to stick to the rock? Um, so if you want to put googly eyes on the rock, uh, for those of you who ordered the Camp Creatology kit, there is a Creatology sequin and glitter glue in there that has a nice little tip applicator on it. And I would just recommend putting a little dot of glue on the back of that googly eye and sticking the googly eyes straight to the rock. If you don't have the creatology glue, you can use um, Elmer's glue. That works fine too. Perfect. Uh, we have a couple of questions about um, both starting and ending the braid. Can you go over that real quick again? Um, yeah, so at the start of the braid, you're just going to take your three strands together. Let me get my third color here. You're going to take your three color strands for your braid and just kind of put them so that they're even. And then you're going to, you're going to make a knot in the end. So you take the string and then you just make, make a loop with all of them. See like this. And then you just pull that knot tight so and make it so that there's a little bit of string sticking out before the knot and and that's what you're going to tape down so you're going to put the tape over this and just tape it to the table and then you can and then you do your outside in method to braid it and when you get to the other end that's where we talked about using the tape so you're just going to tape all three of the strands together at the end of the braid and then you can cut it off at the end and you've got your pointy tape in. Any other questions? Um, yes, if someone is painting their rock, what paint would you recommend? Well, um, I so it's, it's gonna depend on a couple of things. So for uh, for indoor rocks, my favorite paint is going to be the Creatology. So there's a Creatology paint that comes in a pouch. And then there's also the Creatology acrylic paint um, that comes in this box. There's other boxes. This I just have the primary colors here. Um, but those are going to work well for indoor rocks. That's going to work well if you have younger kids that are painting. So like ages three, four, five. Um, now, we also sell, for outdoor rocks, we sell a Craft Smart paint that's just like a little two ounce um, um, paint you can find in the craft paint aisle. And the one you want to get is the multi-surface and it has a black label on it. So if you're used to searching craft paint, uh, here. So this is a regular one. This one's going to wash off in the rain after a while. But if you get this black label one here, it won't wash off in the rain. But remember, this is not for little kids. Like, this is not for the younger kids. So make sure you're checking the ages on the paints um, according and using them according to the, your kids' ages and what they recommend. Because this one right here is not easily washed out of things like clothes. So you have to be more careful with that one. It's because, you know, it's a paint that's good for outdoor rocks. Perfect. But I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend putting the yarn rocks outside if you know it's going to get really wet because the yarn will get dirty and get wet and break down over time. These are more for your indoor or covered porch decorations. Perfect. Um, would you recommend uh, for painting uh, markers? So I believe that we, we have a, a Craft Smart paint that is rated for uh, kids. Again, you'd have to check the age because it may be like four and up or five and up, but there is a Craft Smart paint pen that you can use um, that makes it paint, makes painting really easy. In fact, I did a geometric with the paint pens um, on one of my rocks. So they're oh, very that. easy to use. Thank you. Um, this one was actually done with the creatology paint I was telling you about. So see how cool that looks? Like that's a really good, vibrant paint. Um, what I will say is like you, you can't go super thin. If you try to put it on too thin, you'll have to put a lot of coats. So just 
go slow and um, and it'll have a, a beautiful vibrant color for you. But yeah, that was with the, this is with Creatology paint. This is with the paint pen, CraftSmart. And this one, now it's metallic, but it's with that paint I just told you about. So this is with the black label paint and this can go outside. Awesome. Um, this, one, this one can't. So craft paint, I'm sorry, uh, Creatology paint can't go outside. Okay, perfect. Um, so how would you go about um, using two different colors of yarn without braiding it? Oh, I mean, that's fairly simple. I think you just, you just put them together, right? You could, you could twist them or you could leave them flat and you can just wrap them around the rock. All right, any other questions or anybody else wanna share um, any unique designs or things they've decided to wrap? Um, someone is asking about buttons. How do, how would you do it with buttons having, you know, more than one hole to go through? So that's, that's what I was saying earlier is if you're using buttons, um, you're not going to be able, unless it's a, a very special button, but not, not normal buttons. Normal buttons have the smaller hole because you're using sewing thread. So you can pass one strand of yarn through a buttonhole, um, but it is very difficult to try and pass more than one through. Perfect. I think that's that's it. A lot of people using um, chenille stems instead of yarn, which I think is great. Yep. That's a good one. Those those go through beads really easily as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's. Um, oh, we have a question about acrylic paint. Okay. That one. What's the question? Um, can you use acrylic paint? Would that work on the rocks? Yeah, the, the Creatology paints that I showed in the box, those are acrylic paints. Those are acrylic, okay. Craft Smart, those are acrylic paints, yeah. If you're talking about acrylic paints like a fine artist would use, um, those are gonna hold up less well, I think probably outside. Um, the best way to go is that multi-surface craft paint. That's the most durable paint for rock painting that I have found, other than the paint pens. Perfect. Someone just said that um, they put colored beads in ra at rainbow order. Pretty oh, cool. yeah. Love I'll, it. I wish I had, I, I was kind of, Zoe picked the beads, as you can tell. So we have you know, <laughs> unicorns and rainbows and lots of pink jewels. So those are her favorite colors. Of course. Um, someone else used pom-poms. That's a good one. Yep. And I think, I think that's it. All right. Well, guys, thank you, so much for, here. thank you so much for joining us. As you can see, Zoe's already um, pieced out, but um, I wanted to, I wanted to tell you about uh, what we have upcoming. So, you know, if you've joined us Monday and today, you know that this is yarn beads and bells week. So we're doing stuff with yarn and beads and bells. So tomorrow is the pony bead wind chime. And um, Homen is going to drop the link in the, in the chat where you can go to michaels.com slash camp creatology and you can see everything that we're doing. Um, so you can see all four weeks and all 12 projects. You can see how to get supplies. You can sign up for more. If you only signed up for this class, you can sign up for all the classes if you want or individual classes. Um, you can actually purchase supply kits this year for camp and you can get a, a kit for all of camp, which is the most cost effective, or you can buy the kits by week. So if you're going on vacation or you're doing something else this summer and you can only join for a couple of, of the weeks, um, you can buy the, the kits by week. Um, but we have next, next week is yarn week. So uh, Zoe and I will be back on Monday to teach uh, a yarn canvas class. So we're going to be taking different colors of yarn and gluing them down to a canvas and making an art piece. Um, there's yarn butterflies, there's yarn pom-poms. Uh, week three is paper. So it's all about paper art and paper crafting. And then week four is going to be painting. And Zoe and I will be back for two classes of uh, painting week. So we'll be doing a paint pole and a dot painting that week. So we would love for you to join us. We hope to see you guys. Um, 
Thanks so much for coming to camp and we'll see you next time. All right. Thanks, Jen. Bye, everyone. Yes, I'll see you later. Bye.